does Steve Rogers go back in time right. and retire in the sacred timeline, or does he retire and branches branch. into a new timeline? Because I want my boy Steve to be in a new timeline. Yeah. Yeah. Same. And I've exp and I've tried to like defend this argument, and people go, "No, I want it to be sacred so he can be with our Peggy." If he stays in the sacred, um. He's gonna let a bunch of horrible shit yeah, exactly. happen. He's like, That's hey, not my hey, Peggy, That's Peggy, let's kidding. go to New York. You, you gotta catch this shit. It's gonna be wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>back to the break room. I'm Brandon Barrick and joining me today we got Hector Navarro and Jessica Clemens. <laughs> uh, Hector wrote a great video about the MCU official timeline book that will be coming out on the new Rockstars channel all about how and where the most recent MCU properties fit yeah. to the official timeline. Phase four and phase five it's now been like definitively explained. Yeah. You know when Werewolf by Night happens? I got you covered. It's He's in there. Cover. I thought we, you were going to say expelled and I was like wait what? <laughs> what it's all been <laughs> Expel. <laughs> Expel it on Listen, us. man. Listen, Loki and the TV, hey, they're up to some shenanigans. So <laughs> it's all in there. Yes. It is? Yeah, well, well the first season, season one. Season that's one. still yeah. crazy. Season that's one. still it insane is. that's in there. It but, is. But, you know, all that stuff that Hector's covering in his video, he had so much to talk about from this book. So we're going to talk about the past. Yeah. There were some implications, as Hector put it, in the Infinity Saga. So let's talk about them. Okay. Hector, take it away. Well, before we jump into it, Jessica, I think you had a question about this book real quick. What was I it? I did have a question. Yeah. Is it okay for me to ask you? Please. Yes. Yes. So how does the properties like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. fit into this book? I'm so happy that you asked. I am an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. fan. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of all the Marvel TV shows sort of pre- Marvel Studios deciding we're going to make TV. Yeah. Yeah, God bless. Whether they're good or bad. I'm talking Runaways, Cloak mm -hmm. and Dagger. Agent Carter. Agent Carter, Agent Carter great, show. So great show. Great show. And all the Netflix stuff. Daredevil, Luke Cage is wonderful. Even Iron Fist. I'm like, mm. I'll take it, not leave it. I'll take it. There's some good stuff in there. It's not a great show, but I still love it all. And I'm talking even in humans. So I was Whoa. very excited. Whoa. I was very excited when Anson Mount showed up in Doctor Strange. I was like, that's my dude. That's my Black Bolt from the terrible TV show. <laughs> but I think we've all kind of seen as fans, like the past few years, Marvel Studios hasn't really embraced those. Yeah. And I don't know, other than like, but Disney Plus has a lot of those shows. Mm -hmm. You know, they have the Defender Saga and they're mm -hmm. bringing back Charlie Cox and they're bringing back Vincent mm -hmm. D'Onofrio and Anson Mount. And they brought back the actor who played Jarvis and Agent Carter to have a cameo mm -hmm. in Endgame. So mm -hmm. it's like, I think that Marvel Studios recognizes that those exist and that they have their fans, but they haven't like like looped them in in a real official capacity. I frankly still don't know why. Fans online will say, well, it's because they're not canon. And I think that argument comes from fans wanting to be correct when they're sort of classifying their fictional worlds. Mm -hmm. But also I think there's a crummy side to it where some fans want them not to be canon because they think they're either bad yeah. or they think Netflix yes. Daredevil is so good that it's like, that's my, that's a separate thing. Yeah, don't that's, put it with your crappy MCU. Yeah, uh, the She-Hulk yeah. Daredevil. Uh, it might also my, be that these are like series that people, you would have to go back and watch the series and people yeah. are like, I don't want to go back and watch the that's series. Fine. Here's my movie. That's like, fine. Leave those out. No, so what happens in the intro to this thing, which oh. was written by K. Feige's, Kevin Feige wrote mm. this. And he has some <laughs> verbiage that like when the book came out and people were sort of reporting on it, they were like, this means this. And I'm like, not necessarily. I think it can be interpreted yeah. in a few different ways. So one of the things he says is on the multiverse note, we recognize that there are stories, movies, and series mm -hmm. that are canonical to Marvel, but were created by different storytellers during different periods of Marvel's history. The timeline presented in this book is specific to the MCU's sacred timeline through phase four, but as we move forward and dive deeper into the multiverse saga, you never know when timelines may just crash yeah. or converge. Hint, hint, spoiler alert. So yes. two things, right? Is he talking about leaving the door open for like mm -hmm. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. being canon to Marvel, and, and he was saying created by different storytellers during different periods, or is he really just referring to like the Fox X-Men movies and the Sony Spider-Man movies. What do you guys think? Well, my question maybe is another question to that. Yeah. Do you think he's talking about, we even had this conversation today with our last video was with like the Incredible Hulk. Right. And how we're acknowledging in She-Hulk that that was his past. Yes, he remembers everything that happened. Yeah. It's canon. So is it moments like that maybe? I mean, maybe. And that's another weird one too. I remember back in the day, some people were like, I don't consider it. I'm like, it's, right. it's in yeah, their it's box in. set. It's a part of the thing. Mm -hmm. They brought back William Hurt pretty soon after mm -hmm. that. In 2016's Captain America Civil well, War. Well, it's but also, I think Loki did, the series did a good job of establishing that, like, in the 616, you yeah. have multiple timelines. Right. Like, there's the sacred timeline, which sure. is the main one. Sure. But then, like, you know, Sylvie and classic Loki and all them, they don't come from another multiverse. They're not from 838 or 
one six four oh. two like they're part of a six one six timeline that is like multiple timelines on top of one another on yeah like kind of like a coaxial things. cable with okay. like multiple fi or fiber okay, optics okay. with like multiple strands inside of it okay and then you have others out there like no way home those were all spider-man from different multiverses right with different numbers so not six one six not six one six yeah yeah. yeah. So i think in within a a a universe you have multiple timelines running at the same time i could see that so and, like yeah. ages of shield could be six one six but just like on a different could be so that's could such that's an uh, the slight branch yeah the right, slight branch. right 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 and i think my like heart still wants that stuff to be considered on Same. the sacred timeline, you right. know, official canon, all that stuff, just for like the inclusivity of it. Well, I'm as long as we're also like, if, if we keep bringing it up, we keep yeah. bringing people in, even yeah. if they make little cameos, I'm like, right. come on, we're acknowledging already that they exist. Right. Yeah. We're acknowledging right exactly. now. Exactly, exactly. In some form and whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, like when Daredevil showed up in She-Hulk, they played the theme music from the Netflix. From the Netflix right. show. That's yeah. gonna be his music. The other thing I wanted to bring up is, so in this book, they use the TVA and they use Ms. Minutes as like, she's summarizing the timeline for you. Like oh, she's yeah. bringing, right? So anytime oh. there's a mistake, she's the one that pops up and goes, here's a TVA filing error. We don't know what happened here. Oh, okay, so she's blaming right. for example, the bureaucrats. She like like uh, at the opening of Spider-Man Homecoming, mm. this is a famous This is a mistake. classic, yeah. Classic <laughs> banger of a mistake. It says eight <laughs> years later, from the first Avengers movie to Homecoming, but fans have been like, that's four years, that should be four years. Right. So Ms. Minutes is like, oh, I think Casey spilled some, his coffee on a console. Yeah. Oh, no, like she says that as a little device, which Damn, is really There's Casey. two things, there's two, oh, also yeah, yeah laying in on my boy Eugene. I know, but, <laughs> poor Eugene Cordero, Eugene he's like, Cordero. I'm not in this he's book. He's like, I'm not even in this book, <laughs> um, but. There's I, other people that yeah. work here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, blame it on Obi. But, oh, it doesn't exist yet in this book. But I do think that I, it makes sense why mm -hmm. they would put it in the book. Easy to like summarize, easy right. to fix, be like, well, it was just a mistake. Yeah. But then I was like, so now when I have to source things, yeah, I yeah, say yeah. Miss Minutes said, said that Casey yep. spilled coffee on this. <laughs> so the other thing, okay, Evan, go. There's a lot of questions coming in, so I want to start with, with some of them as we, we Bring go through it. Go. So based off some stuff we've talked about, I imagine Ryan Panner is asking, is Cloak and Dagger mentioned in the book? I no, that, right? no, but uh, you know, again, just from like a fan perspective, like the company Roxxon is in that show. Yeah, and then Roxanne yeah, is, is in, in Loki. Is in so, so it's like Roxanne is also in yeah. the first Iron Man. Yeah, it's, it's an Iron Man. Building exactly. in the back. So it's none of Hulk. none of the ABC television, Netflix shows are in there, but the Marvel one shots are in there. Oh, okay. Like uh, oh. All Hail the King, All the King. And, and the Consultant and yeah. those kinds of things. And so, and those were, because those were made by Marvel Studios, yeah, even was. though they were kind of backdoor pilots for some of those ABC yeah. shows. Interesting. And they were used, they were only on like the DVDs, right? Yes. As, like a special feature. But now they're on Disney Plus. So here's yeah. another thing I want to mention, because I brought up Miss Minutes, right? Is that in the introduction, did you I'm find Miss Yeah, Minutes? I'm just yeah. showing. This There's is what it looks like TVA with Miss Minutes. Alert. It is Brian Tyree Henry in a I know, journal. I know. <laughs> After the bombing of Hiroshima, yeah. poor guy. Tough, poor tough guy. look for my guy Faster. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Miss Minutes in the introduction, she says, uh, just remember, this isn't everything that happens in 616, much less the multiverse. We're always tracking this vast evolving story. And I'm like, see, that's another example. Yeah. This book says this isn't everything that happens in yeah. the 616. So I'm like, so yeah, Cloak and Dagger happened in whatever year. It's like 2017 or whatever it was yeah. supposed to be. They're covering themselves just in case like yes. it, in the future, yeah. it's like, oh, well, we did technically say this. Yep, yep, yep. So I'm any other questions, Evan? Yeah, Toby One Toby is asking, does the book explain where places like the Void and the TV TVA are? Mm. That's a good question, that's a good question. Excellent question. Um, what do you mean by explain? The answer is no. <laughs> the answer is no. But if where you go, are, yeah, if yeah. You go again you to 2023, that's a really fun thing about this, like I said, to sort of keep things simple. Like when Loki kind of goes off? Yeah, they show you the, uh, the heist itself and they show you the TVA Timeline happening concurrently. Oh, at the same time, the so, green one. That's so this cool. is during the, they'll show you the blip and they'll show you the, uh, I wanna show you guys the time heist, if you will, um, and where everything Damn. sort of begins. So right now, and I'll just give you a quick visual. These three are the three different places where Avengers teams were went back in time, mm -hmm. as the sacred timeline is going. And then the, the green's the TVA The green here. is the TVA because Loki's down here in the Gobi Desert. This yeah. is when Loki like, F's up and then the green one begins. And so they just oh. tell you basically everything that happens in order of operations in season one of Loki. And they have to make it make sense for our Terran brains. For our Terran brains. cannot conceptualize exactly. like so 4D. Do know? they do they say this is the void, this is this, this is that? No, other than yeah. what Loki says, which Loki says the TVA exists outside of time and space. Mm -hmm. 
So anything that the TV show says, they kind of repeat in here. But I did have something I wanted to bring up involving okay. the time heist. Well, two things. And I wanted to get your guys' take on it. Yes. First of all, Loki season two ain't <laughs> in here, right? Yes, right. it's not. It so ends where again? At the end of season one, where... Oh, no, the, the, the book, book ends... ends at, the book ends at the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. The that's Guardians. the end of phase four. Okay. The and end it, of says, four. it says it's like Christmas 2025 or whatever year that it takes place in. Oh, so but it has Black Panther. Loki, yes, it has Wakanda forever. But Loki season one ends with everything that happens at the end of season one, right? And get a little oh, zoom okay. in on that bad boy. You've got Loki, you've got classic Loki dying, you've got, you know, Alioth, the void, and then at the end, the TVA right here, it's like unraveling. Remember, the, the, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, the multi, the loom is exploded yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever, yeah. like this is bad. Here, this timeline, because it's just the end of season one, it doesn't end, it, fades. it kind of fades. Yeah. I'm glad you picked up on that. I'm <laughs> glad you picked up on that. Remember I'm like, that. I'm like Remember a child that. at a library when the yeah. adult's reading, I'm like, yeah, yeah. and he goes to bed. It's interesting and that this they timeline, time it. The timeline fades. fades, that's right, fades. It doesn't fades. end, it fades. They time it with like kind of WandaVision too, which is like two weeks yes. after. Three weeks, yeah. Game. It's, yeah, you start to see the events of weeks. WandaVision, so, which is which, really And there was that weird moment, right, with like, uh, he who remains dropping the uh -huh. thing, and Agatha falling, and we were we were theorizing that like all that was at, at the same, same time. time. So going to argue, oh no, yeah, no. go ahead. Go okay, ahead. I was go like ahead. to argue. Do you think when they make a second volume, it'll be a little bit harder now that we have like Loki <laughs> yeah. season two and the Marvels? Yeah, where it's just like hey, we're in yeah. space. Yeah, we're going through different portals. <laughs> I think so, but the way that they also summarized Thor Ragnarok, which if you remember mm. had weird timey wimey mm -hmm. stuff too. Loki fell in the rainbow and showed up on Scar, yeah, Sakar, yeah. like two two uh, weeks earlier. That's right. true. Yeah, I forgot the time. They still kind of laid out normal for okay. Thor Ragnarok. Okay. They're like this and then for our that. simple brains. Yes, for our simple brains. So now going to back to our simple brains. Here is the time heist <laughs> yeah. again. Okay, this is during Endgame. The time heist. The Avengers are successful. Y'all, what happens? Right here, when the time heist is done and they return the stones, what happens to these timelines? It kind of fades. They fade. They fade. There's they fade. dots, though. Why didn't they end if the TVA pruned these? Did the oh, TVA prune these? Oh, That's what I'm saying. Good. Did they prune them? Because here's the weird, confusing that, thing. And they don't, right? wait, so wait, okay, keep going. No, you <laughs> keep going. I was about to say, let's so go. the prune timelines, they're just not acknowledging in the book? I think, I, I don't like, think those timelines to. get pruned, because I think they go, uh, Steve goes back, he puts the stones yeah. back, he's like, hi, Red Skull, I'm just gonna... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The weirdest one, yeah. right? Uh, uh, and then he gets to live on in that branch timeline. I agree with you. Because there, there's that moment timeline. in Loki in the courts, uh -huh. when Loki's trying to be like, what about the Avengers? And Ravona's like, they did what they were supposed to do. they were do. supposed to do. Like, that has but, to happen. And but, then Steve gets to live out, and he somehow came back to our timeline. Yes. We don't know how. But here's the other thing I wanted to bring up, okay. and I think the book's visualization just kind of, like double down for me that it's not clear like yeah, <laughs> yeah. this is the thing because opening episode of loki season one loki's in the gobi desert mm -hmm. what happens b15 shows up yep. whacks him in the face mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. arrest the tv arrests him because that loki wasn't supposed to do that but the avengers in 2012 were supposed to do the time heist yes you still follow me yeah so, but if loki wasn't supposed to steal the tesseract and he, he wasn't supposed to do that. The TVA arrest him, and then you can see them put their little things down in yeah. the Gobi Desert and start pruning the timeline. Does the timeline of 2012 in New York with the Avengers also get pruned? No, it stays, right? It's just how? that part in the desert, that, that time, that moment, okay. because that was the branch. So then, so then if the rest of the timeline stays, either because the Avengers are active in it, yeah. you're telling me that Loki then escapes. Now just Loki disappears yeah, into nothing? Yeah, he just nothing? disappears. I, I know it, right? I know what it sounds. It sounds yeah. really and dumb, but that's you do, how it's Because you've been doing the breakdowns yeah. of Loki. You know this. I'm like, I know, you know but this. It's, but yeah, they just disappears. And what's interesting is the book acknowledges, just like Loki episode one from season one, that they did in fact prune that timeline after they arrest him from the desert. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? The book says that. But then at the beginning introduction of this very book, I think because they're acknowledging the... The, uh, the end of Loki season one, where everything raveled into this multiverse, Miss Minutes says, we don't prune timelines anymore. She says that in the introduction oh, to this book. Oh, fascinating. Why? What? Why? Did they know? Did that... they know season two? Did they know, like, is there now a multiverse that Loki, the multiverse is allowing to exist? And does that retroactively go back and allow the time heist timelines to go on? Maybe it's a situation where Loki was able to escape to the Gobi Desert uh -huh. in that one instance because that was part of He Who Remains script. He, he needed to get Loki and Sylvie there to enact right. his yeah, like, grand true. scheme, right? I think that's like true. 99 times out of 100, right? 
Loki grabs the Tesseract and Iron Man hits him. Or like something else happens that but, prevents him from escaping. And if you think about it, that time heist in 2012 in New York, like if Tony Stark was able to get the Tesseract, then all it would mean was they would return and they had all the same stones. Mm -hmm. When Loki stole it, all it meant, like Ant-Man goes back, all right. it meant was Steve and Tony were like, let's go to the 70s yeah. to get the last stone we're missing and to get some pin particles. And all that really does is give Steve Rogers one more look at Peggy Carter, mm. and all it really does is give mm. Tony Stark one more conversation with his mm -hmm. father. Ugh. If the TVA is saying that wasn't supposed to happen, right. it doesn't really affect the events of the rest of, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I guess, but it does. that does need to happen, right? Because I think that, that you know, that moment with, especially with uh, Tony? Tony and his dad, Give really the resolve cement to, to do to the sacrifice. Do this yeah. To realize like yeah. how important it is that he saves the world Weird, for his right? kid. Yeah, right? so in the introduction, because yeah. I don't want to get it wrong, Miss Minutes literally says, but every now and again, something does go wrong. And in the old days, the TVA would step in to That's prune wild. the branch, restoring it to the proper flow of time. We don't do that anymore. Well, it's not surprising that they knew what if, was going to happen in season two. They sure. probably started yeah. with the end. And then I wonder if Kay, Kay Fides wrote both the forward and the uh, <laughs> right? He, he was Ms. like, Minutes. I know what happens. Yeah, or that's they, they, they wrote something they else first. They must have known. They wrote Isn't something it? else first, and then yeah. they ripped it out, and then it's coming back. Or, or does that little Miss Minutes moment? Does that come from because of the sort of like suggestion at the end of Loki season one? Because yeah. in this Loki season one, if you go back and remember us watching it, we didn't know what season two was going to entail. Right. Mm -hmm. So at the end of season one, we're like, okay. Like Kang is now the head of the TVA. Yeah. We didn't know that it was Loki sort of time skipping. Yeah, no one no one had right. guessed that they went back to before. We just assumed like we oh, thought it, like it's everything a new had TVA. changed. Everything yeah. had changed. And maybe they're not like sacred timeline right. branching anymore. I don't know. So I mean, yeah. go. Uh, Bumman with Bo asked, Do you think that was the first time Loki was arrested by the TVA though? He will remain in season two finale makes it seem like him and Loki are stuck in a perpetual loop with one another. Oh. And we technically, a slice of their technically, well, no, okay. I'm Wait, probably answering this completely wrong. Loki. Yeah, yeah, it's like, they got this variance a couple right. other times, right? Because yeah. they had yeah. that hologram of all the different Lokis yeah. that they've like been monitoring. Right. Or they just and then they had Sophie, file. which is technically yeah. Yeah. a Loki. Yeah, uh, but Sophia DiMartino's Sylvie, they arrested her as a child, so they got yeah. a Loki. Going back to your, uh, yeah. so sorry, I'm we're coming back to this, but I want to, Ask that question. So yeah, when Loki is taken off because they made that branch timeline mm. in the desert, he goes off. They're pruning that timeline of that new branched one. Oh, right. Yeah. When uh, in it's, season two, it's just when localized in the desert. Yeah. I think, okay. And so okay. that's okay. what okay. I thought. Okay. And, but what I'm thinking about is okay. So they're just walking without Loki now, and they just let him escape. And then I'm thinking about what happened to Mobius when he was taken from his home and taken to whatever Loki another was Another Mobius was there. Another, another Mobius yeah. Loki. So that's what's it's, happening, it's right? It's like a there's branch, a, There's right? a branch, another copy. Loki yeah. that's normal. Because like when so they continue. take, when they take Sophie, right? Yeah. Or Sophie. <laughs> when they take Sophie, Sophie yeah. DiMartino. Yeah. They her go to her house and they take her and they yeah. say, you can't live anymore. And they You're branch that yeah. Asgardian timeline. So we, yeah, the whole like, timeline? Yeah, they don't, they don't wipe out that whole timeline. It's just the moment, whatever, we still don't know the reason, right? Right. I would never tell her that little lady. Whatever that moment was, it creates like a branch, and both are still going, and they just take off this one. But like all so those then, characters so still have to exist. So then, in that universe, and that's why they say they do it early enough so that it doesn't become permanent. There's a line yeah, I feel like I in the second right. or third episode right. for okay, Loki okay, where they're like, okay. "If we don't okay. do it before it crosses yeah. the red line, it creates problems." Well, I mean, it's like a fresh new branch yeah, you can yeah. prune, and it I'll, doesn't. I'll also, another reason things. I'm bringing all this stuff up, looking at the visualization of the timeline fading and not ending is because mm. I was also looking to this book for like, give me the confirmation. Does Steve Rogers go back in time right. and retire in the sacred timeline or does he retire and, and branches branch. into a new timeline? Because I want my boy Steve to be in a new timeline. Yeah, yeah same. And I've, exp and I've tried to like defend this argument and people go, no, I want it to be sacred so he can be with our Peggy. And Peggy I go, died the on deal. the sacred. <laughs> True, I mean, she died in 2016. Yeah. So he could have lived a long life, but it's still this notion of, if he stays in the sacred, um, He's gonna let a bunch of horrible shit yeah, exactly. happen. He's like, That's hey, not my hey, Peggy, That's Peggy, not let's go to New York. You, you gotta catch this shit. It's gonna be wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Evan, 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 get on it. Steve. Hey. Yeah, he's just Steve. looking from the window. Yeah, aren't you gonna? He mapped it out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly yeah. Steve, Steve, won't you tell me what happened? I don't think I will. <laughs> <laughs> but it's gonna be hey, a hey, show. Hey, Peggy, Peggy, you gotta go see what Fastos does in Japan. Steve. It's <laughs> Steve! Wild. No, that already would have happened. That would have happened. Yeah, who cares? Steve, where's your friend Bucky? <laughs> Never gonna believe this. He's uh 
He's fucked. Like, I, we're not gonna say. They're fucking him up in Russia right now. You're not gonna believe this shit, baby. You're not gonna believe this shit, baby. Evan, interrupt us. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I love you. Festive Wise asks, when did Cap go back in time to dance with Peggy? Do you think oh. it was uh, after his plane went down, or in Angel Carter, she moves to LA in the second season? Is it after she moves back to New York? Let's look like, it up. How much time do you think maybe? Passed? Oh yeah, yeah. So I, the house sp- felt very LA to me. I sp- oh, it did. Sp- yeah. specifically yeah. tried to look this up because I wanted the confirmation. Yeah. I also wanted the book to say either it's the sacred timeline or an alternate reality. Right. I wanted this book to explain how does he get a sorry a a uh, um, restructured shield that he then gives to Sam because mm-hmm. that's it's the other thing. Totally like, different. Thanos broke the shield. Yeah. yeah. And then a few days later, Steve Rogers takes Mjolnir, goes back in time. Does he have a broken shield with him? No. He in comes my back. in my brain, he goes to an alternate reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shield exactly. undamaged. Probably digs up his own body, which is kind of messed up. I, you know, none of us were thinking that. I know. I none mean, well, well hang on. Up. I have a side note theory on that. But he stays in this place, gets the shield, lives to an old age, lives with Peggy, and then comes back to the sacred timeline with his little watchy clock, mm-hmm. which has the right coordinates, gives a, the never broken shield to Sam to keep allowing it to be in the sacred timeline. Side note, I always think that it would be cool if Steve somehow found a reality where he died in the ice. Oh, okay. So that he's not oh, like replacing a like Steve a, Rogers. Like a Rick and Morty style, like we yes, replace yes, the Steve yes, that's gone. Yes, yes, yes. A reality where Steve straight yeah. up died. His body and the shield are still somewhere in the ice. He knows exactly where. Do you think he, that. you know. Do you think when. To not replace a man's life and to not keep When him that frozen. Howard Stark comes looking for him, that he like puts on like a, a sheet like Scooby-Doo <laughs> and is like, boo, and scares away. <laughs> Howard Stark, he doesn't find the body or whatever. He's like, oh, yeah, never definitely. found it, Peggy, sorry. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think that's what he does. Yeah, no, but I want to read exactly what the book says because. It's very cleverly kind of vague to keep the, you know, to not define exactly right. what happens. But Steve, it says here, um, uh, but Steve Rogers does not return, at least not as they just saw him. After restoring all the stones, as Hulk once pledged to the Ancient One, Steve Rogers has one more promise to keep. Rather than return to his own time, which makes me think, well, that's the future. Sure, Sorry. his own time. He yeah. rejoins Peggy Carter in the distant past. And it says here in the book, 1940s. That's all it says. Oh, they so don't So it could be know. after move to yeah. L.A., because I think she moved to L.A. in 1946. And then maybe after season two, moved back to New York in 1946. And then she got called in the Peggy Carter one shot to come to Washington to fund S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. Um, but uh, to found S.H.I.E.L.D. But it says, none of the other Avengers know what transpires during those years. The only thing that's certain is it begins with the dance he once told Peggy they would share when he returned. And it says here in the little picture caption, in another time, a happy ending is also a new beginning. So nothing that I I said right there, see? Said he goes to an alternate reality branch and the TVA allows him to retire and anything that's definitive. And it doesn't also say he goes back to his own time in the sacred timeline. Well, they probably did that on purpose. On purpose, exactly. (laughs) They're they're like, I'm not answering that, no. You think he tells Howard Stark, hey, don't go out to dinner that one night. You know what I mean? Let me stay home with the kid that one night. I think you know damn well he did it. <laughs> well, I mean, again, that was his boy. His boy was on a mission. Does, does the book yeah. explain why Avengers Campus is full of a bunch of dead heroes <laughs> that just perpetually, yeah. five times a day, have a fight with Taskmaster? And yeah, they can't get no. out of this like existential hell. I guess it's another in. timeline. Evan, question. This might not be the best panel to ask this uh, question. Oh, here we go. But Big Al asks, does this support or contradict contradict Jay's theory that certain projects take place in different times? Mm. Contradict. Yeah. So I did a panel with our buddies Jay Washington and Corey Jandro. And they were convinced, <laughs> effing convinced that yeah. movies and TV shows like Eternals mm-hmm. and She-Hulk Attorney at Law mm-hmm. and Hawkeye took place in other realities. And yeah. I said, Koyjandro, why would you think that? And he goes, well, because Spider-Man swings by a Christmas tree in his Spider-Man movie and it's not destroyed the way it was in Hawkeye. Right. And I went, my brother in Christ, one happens before the other. <laughs> it is a sequence yeah. of time. And this book, in fact, confirms all those phase four projects are on the sacred yeah. timeline. My, my other thing is like, I don't think Marvel could get away with <laughs> mass audiences being like, hey, hey, for the last four years, <laughs> yeah, here, of all of these have been in different places uh-huh. and now uh-huh. we're gonna explain yeah, it. Like, exactly, we, uh, Occam's Razor. Yeah. Right? yeah. Can the I ask another please. question? Please. And then Evan, you can throw yours in. Mine's a quick question. Um, that doesn't exist because it's after phase four. Never mind. What? No, go ahead. No, but you, what's the uh, question? my question was how do they uh, answer She Hulk stepping out of her own? Oh my God! Great question. No, no, no. That's in phase four. Is it? Yes, yeah. it is. Um, was it? Look, it was I, before Wakanda forever. forever. I did the breakdown, so I don't remember the time. I put this in the video that's going to be coming out on the main channel and preview. Uh, I'm very, very excited about it. I'm very happy. But the events of She Hulk Attorney at Law 
take place from like 2024 to 2025. Yeah. The show is over a couple of months. But go ahead and you can kind of skim through that. But just go ahead and turn the page and tell me what you see, Jessica. Turn the page. What is this? What's happening? Ah! Oh. Oh. She Hulk crosses out her own entry and yeah. writes her own entry in the timeline. Oh my y'all. god, it's so she fun. seizes this is control my girl. of her narrative. This is Jennifer Walters. Yes. yes, she writes her own. So right here is written the sort of like summary that you would expect from that last episode as it was happening. Yeah. You're like, oh, she's kind of losing. Her cousin Hulk needs to come in and save her. Like it's all written there with the abomination I'm, and the intelligentsia. I'm and obsessed. then it's crossed out and She-Hulk writes her own. Can I read what she says? Please. Fall 2025, She-Hulk's new finale. <laughs> Jennifer Walters uncovers the Hulk, the Hulk King's plot at Blonsky's retreat and has him arrested. Yes. There's no need to beat him up. The, per the personal harm he's done to her will be resolved in court and he has deep pockets for restitution. Blonsky agrees to return to damage control custody for violating parole, delivering inspirational lectures as abomination. The Matt Murdock arrives, but there's no battle for Daredevil to fight. Walters is just happy to see him again. She invites him to the family picnic, blah, blah, blah. What we saw. What we saw yeah. in the finale. Yeah. But, but Jennifer's calling out. She goes, there was no need to fight. I just, I just went about this the smart way. You know. Oh, you know what she yeah. crossed off, which is really nice. Yeah. It's the intelligentsia humiliate Jennifer Walters yeah. when she's accepting her award. That horrible like yeah. revenge porn scene. She's yeah. like, you know what? No, that's not who. I, it's that not just happen. this. That didn't it's happen. It's this. I love this. This is me. This is who question. Jennifer Walters is. It's a great question, Jessica, and, and it's one of my favorite little secret surprises in the book. Go, Evan. Uh, while we're in that part of the book, um, Ryan Painter and. Uh, Growing kangaroo asking um, about what it says about Scarlet Witch's uh, death. Mm. Or death. I put that in the video as well. Do uh, you want to know what happens? Do you want to know what happens? You guys dead. are getting sneak peeks. Dead. You guys are getting director cuts. Sneak yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is another thing that I, I, I read you guys like the introduction and mm -hmm. some things Miss Minutes said. And I was mm -hmm. like, this was being reported a certain way. But I was like, this could be left up to interpretation. Why is it? So when this book came out. There were some entertainment reporters and websites, I don't know where, immediately kind of flipped to that. And they're like, what's the status? What's the deal? And they just reported what it said. And they were like, this confirms Scarlet Witch is dead in the MCU. And I'm like, you're goofy. You're a goof ass. <laughs> because that's not at all what happens. If you read uh, um, uh, right here, started as kindly. Read as that. kindly, eight three eight Wanda gathers the boys and assures the heartbroken Scarlet Witch they will be loved. And wa the Wanda Maximoff of the Universe six one six surrenders. She destroys Wonder Gore and collapses upon herself, ending two great threats to all of the multiverse. Did it say she died in there? When the Maximoff releases, she has looking. No, it doesn't. No, it says she collapsed Wonder Gore yeah. on herself and kind of surrenders. Ending two great threats to the multiverse. The, what I love about this book is it's like, yeah, the things you know is you know. Yeah. The things you, you don't know, you we're know. not gonna answer. Right, right. <laughs> we're, not gonna answer. <laughs> we're not gonna answer. Which un, again, yeah. understandable. It's yeah. a it's a big topic and they'd have yeah. to like redo so much stuff. Were there things that were like genuinely retcon? Like taken out? Um, no, other than again, those little date errors. Yeah. If and we that's go why. back if we go back in time. I was always like frustrated with, we were talking about this before Brandon, mm -hmm. Iron Man 2 opens with a title card that says six months later, after Tony Stark says, I am Iron Man at the press conference, mm -hmm. and Ivan Vanko has made his, so it's like six months after Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2 takes place. This book finally confirms that is not correct. Okay. Iron Man 1 is in 2008, just like when the movie came out. Yeah. Iron Man 2 takes place in 2010, just like when the movie came out. So it should have said two years later. Two years. So they are fixing things like that, and Miss Minutes keeps coming up like, well, file, we're filing paperwork. I don't know what happened. Everyone's on break right Casey now. Casey was drunk. I can't, Casey I can't was answer drunk. It. <laughs> Casey was Casey drunk. Casey had two men slices of key lime pie. <laughs> this is crazy now. I just, I came in here and Mobius had just barfed all over the common. Just what barfed <laughs> She's just Goodness. blaming it on everybody. Seriously, she's evil. Everybody, um, Butterman. There's, there's some stuff I would like to, uh, there's something that I think is like, it adds kind of interesting sort of context to, but it's again, it's things that we already know, but when you go back and you go, oh, like I didn't realize that was happening in that order. I'll give you another mm. spoiler for the video that's coming out on the main channel. Mm. Um, this is the spoiler, right? You've got the events of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yes. They take place in 2024, spring, summer of 2024. Okay. And at one point in the show, Bucky asks the Dora Milaje, hey, I need a favor. And that ends up being Sam's new wings, which are like vibranium Wakandan mm -hmm. wings for his Captain America suit. Um, we didn't know this at the time, but then when the movie Black Panther Wakanda Forever came out, and that's been confirmed as taking place in spring of 2025, the opening of that movie is T'Challa passing away. Mm -hmm. And then the movie goes one year later. 
So if you time it out, you go, okay, so one year before spring of 2025, I'm in spring of 2024. Oh my God, T'Challa dies there. Yeah. And it's literally right sandwiched in between when Sam asked for a favor. Sorry, when Bucky asked the Dora Milaje for a favor. And they said, and then sure. Sam appears with the wings. So I put in this video, I go, this here's some new context. It's really sad and bittersweet. Wakanda, possibly Shuri herself, helped to design and build these wings right around the time her brother died. Because Wakanda is saying goodbye to one hero, but they're trying to help usher in yeah. a new well, hero. You, know you see what I'm saying? Yeah, and you know what's interesting was Shuri was distracting herself the entire right. time. Her yeah, and that fits into And then when it actually happened, it that. was still very hard for uh, her to take it. So it makes sense that she's yeah. like, oh yeah, I'll make some wings. I'll yeah. do whatever yeah. I want. Yeah, yeah. Easy peasy. They this kept thinking easy. that he would make it, and he was like, I'm not going to make it. So, so those kinds of, when you lay out the sort of timeline things, yeah. kind of go, it makes you relook at some stuff and go, oh, wow, okay, that adds some emotionality maybe. Yeah. That makes it. And also, when you're watching that show, you don't realize how long it is between yes. when he has favor True. with the wings. True. Uh, let's, we're going to go through some more of these templications, but first we got to thank our sponsor for today, and that is That Spice Company. That Spice Company makes gourmet spice blends, including their signature signature blend, That Good Good. Good Good. This is That Good Good. Ooh. This is That that Good Good. That Good Fire. I don't have that one. <laughs> <laughs> that Good Fire that and sense. That Slow Burn. Mmm, and that barbecue ranch, all of that's right there. Uh, plus, their chief spice man is a fan of new rock stars, and we want to support Bobby and his crew and their delicious spices. Bobby! The Good Good is a great barbecue rub to give any cut of meat full flavor, and the Good Fire is perfect if you want to add some heat to your cooking. If you're looking to spice up your game, either click the link in the description below or head over to thatspicecompany.com and use code ROCKSTARS15 at checkout to save 15% of your order. That's that, that spice company. What I say? <laughs> That's that spice company dot com and use code Rockstars fifteen at checkout to save fifteen percent on your order. It's okay. Ooh, sometimes what's that? I, like, what's that? I black That's out nice. when I read ads too. Sometimes and I'll go wait. <laughs> Wait, Wait, what happened? I'm, I'm only blacking out because I'm pretty drunk right now. Um, we also want to remind Man, you that drunk right now. We, I'm so drunk. <laughs> Casey, stop putting whiskey in Casey. my coffee. Uh, <laughs> hey, we want to remind you to check out nerdriot.shop for a ton of great merch to celebrate the holiday season. We got our best bub shirt. Uh, you can get that as a mug. We also got this great mm. Iron Man leg as the Christmas story lamp. You know that fragile lamp. Fragile. You love it so much. That's great. Uh, December 11th is the last day to order if you want to get your items before before Christmas. Grabbing a tea from nerdriot.shop is a great way to support the break room. So either click the link in the description below or head on over to nerdriot.shop right now. I okay. Have, I got another mm -hmm. templication for you. Hit if us. you remember in Captain America the Winter Soldier, Natasha Romanoff was talking about encountering the Winter Soldier, right? Mm, She's like, yes, I ran yes. into him at this point at this time. Mm -hmm. In the timeline, it actually lays that out and she runs into him in 2009. Okay. And then just a year later, she gets assigned by her boss, Nick Fury, to go right. and work for Infiltrate Tony Stark, mm -hmm. the man whose parents were killed by the guy she just ran into the year before. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these fun little things of like, oh, it's re they're really kind of brushing up against one another mm -hmm. um, that you don't even consider. Uh, and then if you go back and rewatch Iron Man 2, you could be like, dude, she just saw Bucky like eight months prior. Yeah. And Bucky killed Do you think Tony's she knew? Dad. She knew about that? I, I bet. I bet so. Nick Fury. I don't know. You don't think Nick Fury told her? No, Maybe. didn't she? Oh, no, no it wasn't. Was like I thought Hydra Captain America secret, talked right? to her about it at one point, but I don't think he did. I think, he I, I think I Nick Fury knew the whole time. Wow. There is that weird moment, too. But he too. didn't know about Hydra. And that was an Arnim Zola thing that they would send Winter Soldier to go take care of political right. enemies, including the Starks. Howard but he might not have realized Hydra was behind it. He okay, just okay. knew, like, the Russians have this okay. thing. I, yeah, that moment in Civil War was always weird to me when, like, you know, Tony was like to Cap, he's like, did you know? And Cap's, and like, like, Cap's like, yeah. And it's like, oh, Cap, you like just found out. You don't have to like He found out, it, he found out two years prior. I guess. He found out two years prior. He saw the little computer screen when Arnim Zola was like, Natasha Romanoff. And he saw yeah, it yeah. and just like didn't go tell Zola. Tony. I know, but it's like, he should be like, listen, it's fresh for me. There's a lot of trauma going on right now. We're all dealing with it. Let's yeah. not fight. It would have been funny if Civil War was like, you know, Tony goes to Natasha's like, did you know? And she's, she's like, like, yeah. yeah he's like, definitely. all right, let's have a fight. Yeah, me and you right now. You, Iron go. Man V Black Widow. Let's go. Go. 
Um, Spidey Reason. Sensei 72 asking, so if this book explains everything, why does it seem like the people who are making the movies can't properly explain it through the films and TV shows? Well, that's a bad faith question. That's a bad yeah. faith question. I don't like it. I mean, the answer is tough. some people do, <laughs> but yeah. there's tons of different teams of people, different creatives working on the stuff. If you're frustrated because you're like, I wish that this stuff was locked down tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, so am I. Yeah. But I think that's part of the reason they probably decided to even make this book. And you, you, you can make a reference book for Marvel Studios now. Yeah, you can make arguments that like, well, why aren't they sitting down and figuring this all out? Yeah. They do do that, and yeah. then everything and changes then every, every, every year. And then a pandemic There's a happens. pandemic. There's then, the death yeah. of a, a yeah. major actor. Yeah, There's, exactly. There's uh, allegations against actors. There's, you know, yeah. changing rights, changing contracts. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, they're, like They're doing, like, a fairly decent job and, of tying it all yeah. together. And some properties don't even know. I know that, yeah. like, She-Hulk, mm -hmm. they didn't even know they were going to get Daredevil for a long time. Right. They were right. like, well, here, we wrote scripts for different yeah. superheroes, and then they were like, right. you get Daredevil. And there's, uh, there's I, certainly some hiccups in the development process. Yeah. Hopefully a lot of that's getting ironed out, thanks to the great work to uh, the writers and the actors by going on strike, yeah. getting some new regulations yeah, in place. Yeah, for sure. Where, you know, the, the, the corner cutting they're doing won't come in the creative process anymore, hopefully. Right, right, like, right. Like, there, there will be a little more effort put into Evan. it. Evan. Uh, Growing Kangaroo asking, does the book explain the story of uh, the weird story of Red Guardian fighting Captain America? Ooh. No, it doesn't because he was lying. Oh, well, you can. Mm. Yeah. Well, or? It was a lie. It's he like, was or? lying. It's, We've talked about this. It's well, kinda, it's kind of like Jessica said what you know is what you know. And so the book does refer to how uh, uh, Alexi, Red Guardian, mm -hmm. he, all he does is bring up Captain yeah. America to his daughter, to his adopted daughter, Natasha. It doesn't say like in the '80s he fought like because we also kind of didn't see it. We you know what I will, you know what There's I will also, tell you. Also, there was an Isaiah Bradley running around. I was gonna say I there was, was about Bucky to bring run, up. There were super soldiers yes. running around that he could have fought, and any of them could have been like sure. I'm Captain America. That's why. I or think Alexi was like I fought Captain America, and that's why when he see doesn't he see Captain uh, no an image of Captain America or something uh, like, doesn't look like that. Am I making that up in my head? Maybe was that a but, what if? Was but that you, a what but if? you brought up uh, Isaiah Bradley. Yeah, yeah that's a good. When the book goes through the '40s, '50s, and '60s. They don't have a picture of when that actually happened because we didn't see it. Yeah. Right. But they have a picture of old man Isaiah Bradley. They have a picture of... Um, In the 40s section? Yeah, if oh. you go to it. They have a picture of Bucky when he was... Like uh, a child? talking to Isaiah, <laughs> child, and and they just use those as use those as sort of they place fought holders. at some point, like during the Vietnam War, right? See, Isn't look that at what this. they say? So it says late forties, early fifties, and they have a picture of old man Isaiah Bradley, okay, and, he, and and it's just recounting what he said as fact. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which I think is great, and they have a picture of uh, Bucky, but this is Bucky, you know, during the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. But it says like nineteen fifty one, he fought Isaiah. Yeah. This book like would be War so much more longer if they had to make passages for like every encounter that we didn't see. Sure. Uh, but they talked about. I'd sure. be like, oh, here's the time they met uh, the yeah. uh, Bridget Bardot. I mean, most of the book would just be the Eternals allowed this atrocity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it would, it would be the like Eternals watch as the yeah. Titanic yeah. sank. Go. Uh, Ryan Painter is asking, how does it talk about the blip in those five years? Oh, that's a great. That's another great question. It's just like the movie. It just goes five <laughs> years later. <laughs> the movies. It, it, it goes to. I love the picture books. It goes to. Um, uh, oh, shoot, where am I? I, I I'll, I'll show it to you. Right? Hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. The cool back. thing is, is in the, the 2010s, and, and, uh, it ends with spring 2018 when Thor chops off Thanos' oh, okay. head and then just walks and then it just, here, I'll just visually show you guys. This is the end of the 2010s. There's Thor, he's sad because he went for the head. You turn the page and it's just like, okay, now the next chapter is the 2020s. Mm. That's me. That's you, <laughs> Shuri. And then it goes to, here's, 28, here's what happens from 2018 to 2023 oh, and they okay. fill you in. Hulk was experimenting on himself, you know, oh, this and this night? and this. Okay. Natasha was doing this. They, put, they have a really cool little detail, I put it in the video. They found by, by uh, watching Moon Knight that he had a passport uh, yeah. uh, assigned 2018. Mm -hmm. So they're like, so he was active during the blip. He did not get dusted. I don't think how it would be in here. I don't know why it what? would be in here, but do they talk about how Wong worked at Target? No, Wong worked at Target. Yeah, it was it's on, on, his, it's it's on, on his, his LinkedIn. His LinkedIn. <laughs> Is she on? Do you see it on there? Yeah, yeah that's right. amazing. Uh, no, it should be. Those are the, those are those moments where two. I'm like, yeah, they're not they're not gonna add yeah. this to the book. They're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we don't need to add these weird <laughs> predicaments into yeah. the book. Uh, one of the parts that always made me so frustrated when I was doing the She-Hulk breakdowns was that they had art in there for Miss Marvel. 
And I was always so confused because I was like, I don't think Ms. Marvel's out yet. It's come out and this yet. book yeah. did just now confirm, like, it even show it breaks it yeah. down by the episode. A lot of those shows got moved around. It got moved around. Yeah. But it's still like, that's not on She-Hulk, those shows. Yeah. Yeah. And even like, it, it's, you know, they moved the Marvels most recently, right? Oh. That was supposed to come out in the summer before Secret Invasion. Oh. They moved that move. They traded so spots with So now Secret Invasion it. had to lead up to the Marvels. Yeah, because when you way. see yeah. the Marvels, it's clear yeah. that Secret Invasion has not happened yet, right? Well, they just don't refer to they it. Don't don't acknowledge it, but it's pretty clear. Yeah. I just want to show also this little what section if? for what if. They did not try to scatter that throughout. That they're no, like, it's they its were own, like, nope, yeah. it's two pages. Thing. You get your there own you go. Thing. This Multiverse, is nice. Those are different Multiverse. universes. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Nice. They're off the That's secret. Nice. Evan, question. Um, Haley asking the question that I feel like we always ask: Does the book address the Eternals and a celestial sticking out of the ocean? Oh, Tiamut. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it does. And when, when when I sort of did the breakdown, because what year did Eternals the movie come out in theaters? Twenty twenty one. It was a twenty. No, it was what? like it was like November. It was after Shang Chi, so yes. it was twenty twenty one. And yeah. after Black Widow, I think Black Widow. Was yeah, the Black first. Widow was like so direct 2021. to streaming. So twenty twenty one, and then the She Hulk TV show was twenty twenty two. The following year, yeah, that was coming out on on Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. She-Hulk so far is the only thing that's referenced the statue. Right. There it is right there. She-Hulk is the only thing so far that's referenced the the. Oh yeah, and it's just on an ad. It's on it's on the internet. Yeah. Um, Ms. Marvel did it? I don't think so, yeah, I but don't when, I looked at, when I looked at the, because now they have Eternals placed in fall of 2024, and okay. She-Hulk takes place the following year, mm -hmm. it kind of feels like it's a little less time from when it happens in universe and when it's referenced one time. But that doesn't mean that there still hasn't been in universe a year and a half of yeah. time where like no one's talked about this yet. So that's in the video. Check it out on the main yeah. channel. I briefly touched also, on that. Also, folks, yeah. there could be a giant man sticking out of the ocean right now, and you'd have no idea. I don't know. I would. I would feel sticking it. Sticking out of the flat earth. Yeah. Exactly, Brandon. Sticking out of the flat earth. Next right question. next to the ice wall. We don't know. Right next to the ice wall. We don't know. This is also a, a world where something awful happens nearly every day. Yeah. Yeah, they don't care. That's I was thinking about yeah. that. It's like, worth it. It's fun. The That's poor fun. people of Earth that yeah. have, that if they could get this book, they're like, great, a book of all of our ruined times. Yeah. Yeah. Ruined. Why, do, why does every Anything zombie else? movie have characters that have never heard of zombies before? <laughs> right. um, Sarah Hatchorn asking, what do you think was the biggest surprise when you saw this official timeline? Like, is there anything you would think is in a different part of time? Is there anything that I would? Think? Yeah, for me, the biggest surprise was I thought Iron Man three took place in the Christmas of 2012, six okay. months after Avengers, after Avengers, in the summer okay. of 2012. I thought Iron Man 3 was the first project in phase two, and I thought Tony Stark was the first character we rejoined, and that post-traumatic stress was six months earlier in May, dude, you went through it, you saw space, you saw aliens, and now you're struggling in Christmas time. This book is just like the MCU in timeline order on Disney+, Plus, which when that came out, people were like, that's not right. Yeah. This book goes, nope, Thor the Dark World happens first in oh. fall of 2013. Okay. And then in Christmas of 2013 is when Iron Man 3 happens. So, and that Avengers is... 2012, summer. 2012, summer of 2012. May. So it's a, a whole year, and, year a and a half. Year and a half. Which is okay. like, that doesn't really break Iron Man 3. That's fine. But I just kind of feel like, doesn't it make sense in kind of a viewing order? And then like, we have we have Iron Man 3, and then the next time we see Iron Man is Avengers Age of Ultron. Yeah. Is Thor the How Dark long is that? But sorry, how no, long is know. that in between? Because he destroyed. That was always my biggest thing. Like, Year and a half. He destroys all of his suits yeah. in Iron Man Three. And switches and then, to the Iron Legion. And yeah, and when he shows yeah. up in Avengers: Age of Ultron, he's like, "Oh, I got suits." Oh yeah, I got a bunch uh, of. Them. Here's but I guess if he's been building suits nonstop for a year and a half, year and a that half. makes sense. And it, what's really cool is there's a spread in here for all of the Iron Man armors, Ooh. which I mean, you can look up. The you can, marks. Yeah, you there's can, so many. You can kind of see the marks. So it's not even like it's that revelatory. But what I didn't realize was he builds all these suits in Iron Man Three. They're right here. Mm -hmm. He blowed them up. Blowed them this up. suit I think is the Mark Forty Two. This one at the end, the, the one they had the little pieces. In oh, Iron then, Man like, 3. fly to him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the Mark 42. I think, unless I don't know my Roman numerals, I uh, Mark 43 got? is his uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. Mark 44 is the Hulkbuster. Okay. Mark 45 is, I think this is Spider-Man Homecoming. Or, I sorry, think, Civil War. I think War. that's 46, right? X 45, 46, whatever the order... I'm sorry, I might be confused with the little... The little, 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 little I'm doing it in the wrong <laughs> order. But basically, every time we then see him in an appearance, yeah. he's just only made one new suit. Oh, okay. And it I slows down a little Yeah, bit. I didn't realize that. He slows down, and this I guess... way you can point at it. Thank you. And he, pivots oh. to, and he pivots to the Iron Legion. But yeah, this is just like, okay, after Age of Ultron, then he has, like, uh, Civil War. Then he has, like, the one in Spider-Man Homecoming, which is just a month or two after Civil War. Okay. Then he has... The next suit he builds after Homecoming isn't 
isn't the one he uses. It's the Bruce Banner one that he uses in Infinity War. Mm. And then the very next one he has is uh, the liquid the nano. metal nanotech yeah. Yeah. That, he, that he rocks in 2018. And then he only has one more suit after that all the way in 2023 when he comes back. This is a Pepper Potts suit. I love that suit so and, much. Yeah, yeah, and this was this was like he plugged that in there somewhere. Yeah, it's great. The rest. It's suit. funny. I think these suits are the ones that are like featured in actual Marvel Studios. Uh, at one point, you yeah, can go in and it would be suits, like yeah. the little suits and a little. You've been to store. Marvel Studios? No, it's That's just so in cool. photos. Oh, okay. they, won't, they won't let me in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Evan, another question. Why. Yeah, um, Aunt Zelda asking: Is oh. there a page for Werewolf by Night? Yes, awesome. of course there is. And that's a real funny one. It's also, again, in the oh, video. Yeah, where? Teaser for the video. Oh, teaser for the oh video. yeah, teaser for the video. I mean, uh, we could, hey, we could Teaser for the video. Yeah, if you go all the way to the end, the Miss Minutes has a fun little weird little note about Werewolf by Night, which I don't understand. I want to have one of you guys read it. Because I was just like, oh, I don't know if that was necessary, but okay. It's your turn. End of 2025. You got to do it in a Miss Minutes voice. Okay. Here's oh, Werewolf by Night. Me, my man. The pictures, that looks the so are so bizarre. That looks so bizarre. In and color. In, yeah. <laughs> well, because we saw Werewolf by Night in color, but it was very stylized. Yeah, that yeah. is like a weird like set, set photo. photo. Yeah. It's bizarre. And Miss Minutes has a little TVA uh, blurb there. What does Miss Minutes she take? She says, hey, y'all, TV, TVA alert. These events seem to occur in 2025, but magical influences can make stuff like this Hard to pin down. <laughs> Wait, what was that last one? Hard to pin down. No. What would what would Miss Minute say if she saw a dog and she wanted a pet? Hey y'all, come over here. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. <laughs> and she asks somebody if she could pet the dog. Hey, can I pet your dog? That's pretty your good. Dog. Can, can I pet your dog? Can I pet that dog? Can I pet that dog? Can I pet that dog? That dog's so cute. Is he a yeah. service can animal? Pet that dog? But what's cool is that this book kind of acknowledges that werewolf by night. Has magic like that? Yeah. Magic is involved. Oh, like, there's oh, magic. There's is a there? bloodstone. I there's mean, some zapping. Does he go through a little portal? Or am I? Uh, no, there's an escape. Show? Yeah, oh, they, they just like, walk on he, a beach away. Bombed so out it, there. It, it does like feel bomb. like there's. It does feel kind of like out of time, right? It looks yeah. like it could happen whenever, yes, but there yes, is some yes. kind of like modernness to it towards yeah. the end, right? So maybe there's, so a, maybe, there's an old payphone or something like that. So maybe Ms. Minutes is saying we don't know exactly when this happens. Yeah. But there's there's other instances like that in the book. For example. Uh, Christian Bale's character in Thor, Gore, his daughter dies in the mm -hmm. opening, mm -hmm. and then he goes and finds the oasis with gods yeah, yeah. and then kills these gods. The book is like, at an unknown date, his daughter dies. Mm -hmm. So we don't know how long, like when it he was happens. Also, oh, and also because yeah. he's just in the same, he's in the desert, wandering alone yeah. with her. So yeah. it's also like, we don't know what Like a different side. They could be closer know. to a black yeah. hole, affecting gravity and time right. in a different right. way. Right, right, right. That's right. interesting. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. interesting. I'm yeah. more interested in the book, uh, reading the passages that are like, uh, I don't think like Hexview was it different the time in there Westview Westview or Westview sorry I don't what think did it, I say I don't, Hexview Hexview, I don't Hexview. Well, wait, which hey. is true yeah. Westview Hexview. in the Hex yeah. yeah Westview in the Hex did time outside work slower mm -hmm. faster was it oh. just normal I think it was like she went through a couple of episodes in like a day yeah Wanda she made it like now we're in the 50s today say, we're in the I think 60s. at some point in the show they said it was like it'd been a week or like yeah. two weeks yep, yep, or something yep. like that so I think that well was we also they don't really find normal. it until a certain point right it's yes. been going on yes before uh, yep. Jimmy Woo finds it mm -hmm. and then Monica gets sucked in yeah. and then she pops and out and the cops are like yeah. there's no Westview there's only an Eastview but it's like you were saying everything we know we is know we know is yeah. in there yeah Evan all right, um, got a few more questions before we wrap it up. Uh, these are some of the most important questions I think that oh have been asked today. It's very fitting. Are they all spoiling up. the video that's coming out? So Ryan Painter asks, how many pages are there? Ooh. I, I can answer that. 69. Oh, <laughs> got Hector, get out. 420 The video's not coming out. With the, with, with the, the index, the, it yeah. is 343, but I would say it ends at 339. Oh, it's pretty okay. good. It's pretty but good. But when you guys are reading, what kind of bookmark do you use? Oh, oh I have, uh, well, recently I was reading the Department of Truth comic books, mm. and I used a $2 bill for that because it felt like oh, weird. I, and I've been using my $2 bill as a bookmark hear, for a while. You want to hear how monstrous I am? You have a thong? You fold your pages? <laughs> What did you say? Thank you. Thank you. A thong. A thong? Thank yeah. you. Brandon. Thank you, Hector. Horrible. What did you say? You want to know how We're dirty not... I am? I... Thank no, you, Hector. No, did you say dirty I... or what did you say? I, I did, but I I oh. do fold the pages. That's, I fold that's the pages. That's honestly worse than putting a thong that in there. Is, sorry. Is, sorry. Worse. As a book lover, I'm sorry. Disgusted. I get books from the library, so disgusted I can't be Disgusted by that. That'd but you rude. can put your thong in it? I yeah. put a two dollar bill in Whatever, the book. You pervert. As long as that thong doesn't have like poopy stain on yeah, it. Yeah, it was a clean fine. thong. It it's just clean underwear. Everyone grow better up. than folding the book, Jessica. Don't fold a book. What do you Good use? Lord. 
old uh, comic book trading cards that are strewn oh, adorable, around the house. Yeah. Adorable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Why did and that thumbs. person <laughs> ask that question? <laughs> it was when we were talking about, you know, books and... Oh, yeah, like out of. the quality of the spine. Thank oh. you for yeah. reserving it to the end. I yeah, feel yeah. like it means we got uh, through all the good juicy stuff. I also stuff. use yeah. books to hold up my TV, though. So mm. keep going. Yeah. That's Gosh. fine. All right, the oh last book God. question You're never going to return this. You're going to keep it? <laughs> prop it up your TV at home. Let me put my microwave on top of something. going to be like, Jessica, can you bring that book back? And you'll be like, I'm watching TV tonight. I need it at eye level. Go ahead. Ahead, Evan. Sarah Hatchdorin asking, how many C's would you would y'all use to describe the thickness of the book? Oh, it's all living breathe. It's a slim thicky for sure. Uh, it's it's not very thick, but it's very big. It's slim yeah. thick, but look at the look at yeah, this. Yeah, it's this, a tall boy, it's heavy. thick boy. She's slim thick. I would give it four C's. Four C's. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Thick, Two C's. Thick with four C's. Yeah. Th- I would say four C's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty fleshy, good. I would say, too. But Very me, fleshy book. It took me not that long to read it, but I was powering through it. It's I good, yeah. hate brand name. <laughs> oh, this, oh is new new this, this is a this new is thing. This is an official it's a new break break term. Thing. How fleshy something is. When? I'm so, yeah, yeah. When I left? Explain as that. soon as I left? Yeah. <laughs> Explain the origins of that. You know, how much how much meat on well, that Let me guess, does it have to do with the boys' breakdown or something? Where did it come from? I think it did come from a boy, the Gen V after show. It did. It did? We were talking about whales. Oh, Ew, yeah. the scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, from yeah. like boy season. The woman two has a blowhole. the woman has a blowhole in the back, and some stuff comes out. Oh, of it. and Gen B. I yeah. haven't seen that yet, but I heard and, about it. Oh, All right. and then, I but got it. Maud was talking about the inside of a whale's mouth mm. as being fleshy. Mm. John yeah. said, "I don't like the Maud <laughs> used that word." Yeah. Has Maud been yeah. inside a whale's mouth? I don't she, know. What do they do in Australia? She, yeah, she's Australian. She's already, say, that's how they get around. That's their mass transit, I believe. Isn't that like Moses? Pergles, not Jonah. How dare you? Oh, okay. Pergles is from Ahsoka. From Ahsoka. It came from Pergles oh, from Pergles Ahsoka, from not Ahsoka. Gen B. <laughs> but it sounds filthy. I mean... It sounds filthy. Yeah. Did you have any other uh, old school templications you wanted to hit? <laughs> no, that's pretty much it. There's okay. just great little things in there where, you know, in Iron Man 2, Jarvis is talking to Tony Stark and he's like, Ivan Vanko defected to the U.S. in 1963. Mm. Then for some reason, there's a visual or like a, a, a page that Tony is reading and it says he defected in 1966. There's these weird little inconsistencies. But like people say the wrong thing all yeah. the time. Yeah, exactly. A lot of it, I think, I is, want my bird. This is what I said about this book. I did give it, I did give this five stars. I think it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I, I said in the video that's coming out, I said, this book has Marvel no prize energy. Do you guys know what a Marvel no prize is? That's uh, the opposite I, of a Nobel I recall prize? this from the comic books, yes. Yeah, back in the day in the 70s and 80s, uh, Marvel Comics would give out a no prize to a reader who would write in with a mistake in, across their comic books. If they're like, this bad guy was arrested here and put in jail, but then he shows up in this comic book here. But only if the reader would write in the mistake and then they would go, it's probably because he broke out here and so now it makes it make sense. If a reader could supply a continuity error mm. fix, mm-hmm. something to make it make sense and have that energy of trying mm. to fix the inconsistencies, yeah. Marvel Comics editorial would send them a, an empty envelope that just said Marvel No Prize on the top. And they'd go, congrats, you won a no prize. And it was just them mailing an empty envelope. But those became collector's items. And then Marvel had to stop doing it because people were like really hungry for that stuff. Yeah. But this en- this energy of like, don't don't try to cinema sins this right. shit. Yeah. That's easy to do. That's yeah. dumb. That's, you know, dismissive. That's uh, But if you can tell me, oh, Hulk says, or Thor says, Serta, didn't my father kill you like half a million years ago? Yeah. Don't go, uh, uh, as guardians don't live half a million years. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. First of all, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Find the solution. The solution is, obviously, in that example, Thor is exaggerating. He's being facetious. He's being also, facetious. Also, you're assuming that every year is an Earth year. Thank you. You, you just mentioned black planet, holes. You mentioned black holes Our planet space. takes, yes, it takes 365 days and point whatever to get yeah. around the sun. Leap year. Not Leap every day. planet does that. Pluto didn't even make a full rotation around uh, the sun in the time it was a planet. That's it didn't what make I'm a saying. full year. That's what I'm saying. So why, why would it be years? You know what? If I could, I'd give you a Marvel no prize. I'd you give so you much. a Marvel no prize. I, I, like, if, I, I don't do it as much as he does. If, so you I, think, <laughs> if you think the current MCU is like full of holes, it doesn't yeah. make sense. Go read like comics. Right, exactly. Oh comics. Exactly. I, I once went back to like start X Men from the beginning. Yeah. Oh, and it is just oh. full of like nonsense that is not. <laughs> they call Scott Summers Slim Summers for a couple. Yeah. Uh, issues yeah. at one point, uh, uh, Magneto has telepathic powers. Like they yeah. weren't, they, they didn't know what the fuck they there were. Was, there, was, fun. there was some old Spider-Man comic where he wasn't Peter Parker. He was like Peter, uh, like Brent or something. For one little <laughs> mistake in one balloon, yeah. and it's like, shut yeah, up. That stuff like, is, you know, these guys were cranking out comic books, and so like mistakes happen. High on cocaine. Have, <laughs> have the energy. Have the energy of trying to like 
fix the thing if you can right. if it's an easy fix don't point out the yeah. error yeah. as like it destroys the you know yeah i love this i feel yeah. it i'm here yeah. for it there you go well, thank you, you for all your hard work on that, Hector. No uh, yeah, check out uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and official timeline at bookstores near you. And or it's your front, local bookstore. And here's the front of it. And there's, yeah. there's the back. There's the front. Uh, enjoy it all. Uh, makes a great holiday gift, maybe, for the MCU yeah. fan in your life. They're not paying us to say that. But it is a fun book to like just thumb through. It's a great coffee table book. You get, I, it is a great uh, coffee Put it in your bathroom if you trust your guests. You get know. reminded of stuff where you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. There was a bad guy at the end of the first Ant-Man movie who got away with, like, Darren Cross pimp yeah, particles. Yeah, he's what a Hydra agent. We still too. haven't caught up with that guy yet. Yeah. Mitchell he's Carson. A, he's, he's a out Nazi. There somewhere. No, well, hi, maybe Hydra, but he well, was. Well, Hydras yeah. are Nazis. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah, like yeah, Nazi yeah, yeah. plus. Hey, you know say I mean? that at the table with them. That's right. That's you right. One. <laughs> that's right. It's true. Don't let Hydra agents at your uh, holiday table. Ooh, Hydra. That's yeah, Boo Hydra. Our tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. <laughs> Boo Hydra. <laughs> that's it. Our hottest take yet. Boo Hydra. Uh, that's it for us today. Make sure to subscribe to the Break Room channel right here on YouTube and give us a follow on Twitch. We do these videos live. Would anyone like to plug their socials today? I'm feeling generous. Oh, you can follow me at Grin and Barrick. What? <laughs> you can follow me at Lulu underscore Clemens. Where they can find what? you. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't have one now. Uh, yeah, uh, follow me. Evan, what's your social media? Break Room NR. Boring. Yeah, Boring. Man. Wow, boo, you know tomatoes, tomatoes, poo, poo, poo. You can follow me on Heroes Reforged on YouTube. There you go. Go check it out. Check out Heroes Reforged on YouTube. You. Uh, yeah, make sure you follow at Break Room NR on all of our platforms. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Let's get us. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.